Great archaeological discoveries are being made in Israel. Here to talk about one, or maybe more, of those archaeological discoveries is Aaron Lipkin. Aaron, welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Thank you for having me. Aaron, uh, you've seen me uh, interview Avi Lipkin many, many times uh, right here at Prophecy Watchers. Aaron is Avi's son, and it's been a pleasure to get to know him uh, for several reasons, one of which is that he's the operator of Lipkin tours in Israel. And uh, you take tourists, uh, how often do you take tour groups? We have tourists, tourists coming all the time to Israel. Uh, Israel is experiencing a, a boom in tourism and uh, we have our hands full, thank God. And I found it interesting uh, to learn that there is a boom in tourism to Israel, uh, which means just one thing. There are people all over the world who are reading uh, their Bibles and they're wanting to go to the land of the Bible, right? Which is good news because it means that, that there's a spiritual growth out there. Yes, and I think that it's also a fulfillment of the prophecies. Uh, you know, when the Bible speaks about the nations coming to the land, uh, coming to worship uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, we actually see this in front of us today. Now when Aaron takes tours, they are very, very special tours. Uh, he takes people to see things that are astounding, literally. We went on tour with him in 2015, and we went to a place called Argamon where there is a giant footprint, several hundred feet long, and it's been there on the ground for, what, 3,500 years or so. And it hasn't even been disturbed in 3,500 years. And he took us to see this footprint. I still haven't, to this day, I haven't gotten over seeing that artifact that was uh, 3,500 years old. But that was an altar uh, apparently built by Joshua. And, and you uh, took us there. I had no idea that such a thing existed. But that's only the beginning of the story, right? It's the beginning of the story. You know, for, for centuries we've been reading the Bible. Uh, we've been reading the book itself. And uh, in, our, in, our, in our minds, we've been picturing how things looked like. And in the last uh, 30, 40 years, the archaeological discoveries that are being made are really changing the way that we pictured how things looked like. Um, and for example, the footprints that you just described, that's a, a big archaeological surprise that nobody really expected uh, to find. Um, we, we, we don't see in the Bible anywhere uh, that there is a description of the Israelites building a footprint. Uh, and suddenly Professor Adam Zerta that we're going to speak about mm -hmm. um, walks in the Jordan Valley surveying the area and surprisingly he finds these six formations, these three, six structures uh, in different areas in Samaria. And now you have to ask what it is. Where is it? Where does it appear in the Bible? And speaking of appearing in the Bible, and, and this was an amazing thing to me. I'm looking at my Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 24, and, and it says, every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness, Lebanon, from the river, uh, the river Euphrates, unto the uttermost sea. Uh, shall your coast be. And this idea of where your feet touch the ground is memorialized in those altars. Right. And particularly in Argamon, it's a footprint. How long is the footprint? It's several hundred feet, right? Yes. Well, you might, may know it in meters <laughs> rather than feet. It's, it's fairly big. Uh, it definitely meters I do know. It's, uh, it's about 100 meters on 50 meters. Um, but uh, the amazing thing is that, that it, it just exactly as you've mentioned, uh, you as an archaeologist, you come and you see this footprint and you immediately identify it as Israelite because of the pottery. And then you're looking at the Bible and you're looking for, for feet. You're looking for where, where f the word foot uh, it appears. And suddenly mm -hmm. you see that the book of Joshua is, is, has a, a lot of mentioning of, of feet. And, and the feet are basically 
the feet of the Israelite. It's, it's where they established their presence and the land. And the big story of the, 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 the book of Joshua is how the Israelites conquered the land from the hands of the Canaanites. It's the land that God gives the Israelites, and where they put their feet will be theirs. And suddenly, you survey the Jordan Valley, and you find feet. And so Professor Adam Zeltal had the conclusion that that, that that foot is basically what we see today as a flag, saying, this is ours, this belongs to God, it belongs to the Israelites. Well, as, as Christians, Bible-believing Christians, we do believe in and teach prophecy. And prophecy talks about the return of Israel to the land in the latter days. And therefore, we believe these are the latter days. It's, it just seems very simple. A lot of people disagree with that. It seems like a simple enough thought to me. Uh, but to me, Israel is God's great sign for the latter days. When the people have come back and now they're starting to discover things. You say at an exponential rate. You and others uh, are opening doors so that people can see the ancient land exactly as it's presented in Scripture. And now this is a faith builder. And, and you know, it, it seems to be bringing a lot of people to belief. Take, for example, Professor Zertal himself. He grew up in a, uh, a kibbutz. Now a kibbutz in Israel is a place where usually secular Jews uh, who do not believe in God um, you know, bring up their children and live. And so Professor Adam Zartal lived in that environment and later on after uh, getting wounded in the Yom Kippur War uh, he decides to become an archaeologist and he goes to university and he receives his degrees uh, and what is he being taught in the university? He's mm -hmm. being taught that the Bible cannot be treated as a book of history. The stories in the Bible never happened. Uh, um, all the stories between Exodus and Kings 1 um, are either false or inaccurate at best. Um, and Professor Zertal grows into this, uh, I would say, academic school. And, and when he, he surveys Samaria and he surveys the Jordan Valley, suddenly these amazing discoveries um, are being, are, are popping out of the, of, of the ground and he, he as, as a, as a non-believer is looking at these things and he's combating between himself, his Jewish identity, his knowledge of the Bible and his academic upbringing. And one day while surveying Mount Ibal, not looking for an altar at all, hmm. Um, he stumbles upon a very, very interesting site. Now, Mount Ebal is in the center part of Israel. Uh, it figures prominently in the Bible. Uh, there are two mountains there together, right? Uh, Gerizim and Ebal. And right in the middle of Israel, and when you're standing up on top of Mount Ebal, you have a, a good view. You can see a long way in several directions. And so it would be a very good place to build an altar. Uh, it, to, to, for, uh, for everybody to see. In other words, if it is, it, uh, is it the highest spot uh, in central Israel or is there a spot higher than that? It's one of the highest spots in central Israel. Okay. Um, and, and I think that, that the interest, interestingly the, the ceremony of the blessings and the curses uh, that Moses commands the Israelites to do immediately upon entering the land uh, is, is is very, very carefully picked because the area is really the center of the land. Mm -hmm. uh, and from that point on, from, from the city of Shechem, from Mount Gerizim and Mount Ibal, uh, is, Israel is really in the grasp of your hand. Uh, all the major roads go through that area. Uh, and when you we read the scriptures, you see that Moses commands the Israelites to go to Mount Ibal and Mount Gerizim, and he describes exactly, pinpoints exactly where this place is. Um, and, and so this is a very central area. And very interestingly, the area of Shechem is very close to Jacob. It's mm -hmm. very close to the Israelites. As you remember, uh, Jacob bought a certain piece of land uh, where later on Joseph is buried. Um, the, the sons of Jacob go into Shechem and they have the story of Dinah uh, and the massacre of the Canaanites in, in the city of Shechem. So this area has a very important role mm. in the 
biblical story of the Israelites. Mm. And so in definitely a very, very important place in the land. Now I'm holding my Bible here. It's open to Joshua chapter 8 and verse 30. And I'm going to read this verse, but first I want to remind you of what Aaron just said a minute ago. He said that when Adam Tertal went to school, they basically taught him that the things written in the Bible were not necessarily true. They were mythology or whatever. Well, here's a sentence in the Bible. Uh, Joshua 8, verse 30, it says, Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. Well, how much clearer can you get? <laughs> <laughs> and yet the, the professors would say, well, this is not necessarily true, right? Right, right. And, and, and they're actually basing their, their knowledge on former ar- Christian archaeologists that came to Israel in the 19th century. Just like you, they opened the Bible and they saw that there is a clear um, mentioning of an altar being built on Mount Ebal. And they went to look for it. But they had a certain picture in their mind ah. when reading the Bible, and they thought they knew where it was. But I guess if you really want to find amazing stuff, you have to be humble. And Professor Zertal uh, did not come to look for an altar. The Christian archaeologist in the 19th century could not find it. And the later on archaeologist, the modern archaeologist, said, you see, these Christian Bible archaeologists could not find the altar, then the altar doesn't exist. Mm. And the whole story of the blessings and the curses did not happen. Ah. And Adam Zertal, who did not come to Mount Ibal to look for the altar, Mm -hmm. who thought that the whole story is a big mythology, as you said, Ah. finds it surprisingly without looking for it. And that discovery changes him drastically from a non-believer to something else. I don't know if you remember when Adam Zertal lectured to us in Jerusalem, I presented him as the born-again archaeologist. You did. Because because he really went against everything that he was taught uh, because of this amazing discovery. Adam Zertal, this is an an important uh, book, by the way, and uh, we're going to uh, make this available to you. Again, uh, his name's right across the top, Adam Zertal, A Nation Born. Uh, The Altar of Mount Ebal and the Birth of Israel. That's very interesting that that subtitle would be written that way. And right here is a picture uh, on the cover of of that altar. The fascinating thing to me is that when people first discovered the altar, it didn't look like this. It it had been concealed. Tell us about that. Well, Professor Zaltar and his crew are walking on Mount Ebal on the opposite side of where the Christian archaeologists looked for the altar. Uh huh. And what they're doing is they're surveying, they're looking at the land and they're, they're looking for ancient remains, ancient walls, uh, ancient houses, um, pottery. And archaeologists can look at pottery and say exactly to which civilization or time period they uh-huh. belong to. And so Professor Zeltal is walk, walking with his crew on Mount Ibal And they see suddenly a lot of pottery that is very, very clear, clearly Israelite pottery. And for Professor Zertal, this is very interesting because he is very interested in that time period. And he decides to come and and dig in the area. And the first thing they see is that there is a compound that looks like a footprint. Uh Aha, a footprint of all things. Exactly. And by the way, I've got to stop you right there, but but continue where you left off in just a moment. This idea of footprints, uh, Adam Zertal and others now are beginning to find footprints all over Israel in key places. That is, foot-shaped places of worship. And it makes you wonder, why would you deliberately build a, a place of worship in the shape of a foot? But it's perfectly logical. So, so back to Adam Zertal. He starts finding pottery, <clears throat> but still hasn't found the altar yet. Right. He, he comes and he sees the pottery. He sees the footprint uh, wall that surrounds a compound. And in the center of that footprint, he sees a pile of rocks. Hmm. Now, for uh, uh, someone who's not an archaeologist, it's just a pile of rock. But for an archaeologist that sees the, the amount of pottery in that area, 
immediately brings up a question, why is there so much pottery there, ancient pottery, mm -hmm. Israelite pottery? Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in 1981, uh, Adam Zeltal decides to come and, uh, and dig there, and his crew starts peeling away the layer of stone on that pile. And suddenly they start seeing uh, stones that are set in a certain way and a certain direction. They continue peeling the upper layer, uh, which seems to have uh, put the, the ancient Israelites put the stones or threw the stones on top of that structure for a certain reason. Uh, Adam Zeltal thinks that they finished using that structure and, and they moved somewhere else, maybe Shiloh, maybe Bethel, and in order to to uh, to cover it in a respectful way, they covered it with stone. So 3,200 years afterwards, the crew of Adam Zertal comes and all they have to do is just peel away the outer uh, exterior layer. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, they see a structure that they cannot explain. Now, Professor Zertal, in his mind, knows the story of Mount Ibal. He knows the story of the altar. And in his brain, and in, in, in this book, he describes the, the battle, the struggle between Adam Zertal, who knows the Bible, and professor of archaeology, Adam Zertal, that was taught that the Bible is a fairy tale. And he's looking at the structure, and he, he says to himself, it's not the altar. It's not the altar. <laughs> it's something else. But the more they dig in, the more they find uh, evidence that eventually just makes it very clear. It's, it's remarkable. <clears throat> it's a wonderful story. And by the way, uh, uh, Aaron has allowed us to use some of the photographs of the area, including some aerial shots, uh, which we, you've been watching as he's been talking. And those shots are, uh, well, they, 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 they give me uh, uh, goosebumps. I mean, they are exciting because when you when this when the scripture comes alive in front of your very eyes, uh, it does something that you can't do any other way, and uh, this is what you do for a living a as a tour guide and a leader of a tour. And I I'll never uh, uh, forget when you took us to several places and you you lectured at each spot about the the Bible stories that accompany this this particular spot. Uh, there's, you know, I've never forgotten that. It's, it's wonderful. You can study the Bible all your life, but when you stand on a spot, it's different, right? Exactly. I, I think I, I, during the years I've seen Jews and Christians come to the land, and when they come back home, they're different. The land really changes something in them, um, and and I think that 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 the visit to Israel is is really mandatory. I think that that every Bible-believing person in the world has to come to Israel to, to visit those places, to touch the stones that, that our forefathers and, the, and, and the, the, the amazing heroes of the Bible touched and, and were in. Um, unfortunately, today, um, what's being taught in colleges and schools is that the Bible is a fairy tale that that it's right. really not historical that all the the stories there are made up, um, and and people when, when when children are being sent to college that's what they're being taught. When you're looking at the statistics, the Pew statistics of of how America's situation is in terms of religion and belief in the Bible and in God, what you see is a, a steady decrease in the number of Bible believing people or people who believe in God in the United States. And that's, in my eyes, a terrible thing. Uh, and there is a, a very big increase in the number of people that don't believe in God, that don't believe in the Bible. And, and I think, I believe, I see that Israel is a very important component in Bible education, in spiritual education. And what you described is exactly what everybody feels when they stand in those places that are mentioned in the Bible. How can you stand and touch the altar of Joshua and say that Joshua never existed, that Moses never existed? Uh, it's just overwhelming proof and, and it really strengthens you. So when you return back home to the United States or wherever you come from, you become a stronger believer. And, and Israel is really, really an important component in that. 
Uh, in the past, we've uh, uh, offered you some of uh, the, the DVDs that Aaron has made. Uh, Bethel, uh, the gate of heaven. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget standing at Bethel uh, that morning. It was a little chilly and a little bit windy, and but there was something about being there. And you described uh, the uh, the significant spots around this area that showed without any doubt whatsoever this was an important place. Not only was it important today, but a thousand years ago it was important, two thousand years, three thousand years ago it was an important place. And uh, by the way, that is featured uh, uh, in this DVD called Bethel, uh, The Gate of Heaven. And then, of course, we've mentioned the footsteps of God, Argamon, where there's this giant hundred plus meter long footprint that, that was actually laid out 3,500 years ago. And then this one, Shiloh, the Forgotten Feast. Uh, we visited Shiloh and we, we were amazed. Tell us about Shiloh. And you visit this with your tour groups all the time. Yes, Shiloh is a very, very important biblical site for Jews and also for Christians. And one of the surprising things is that, that when you walk in Shiloh, you see uh, so many uh, Byzantine churches that were built in ancient Shiloh. And for a uh, village such, in such a size, so many churches is a big question mark. Why? Why is this such a holy place for Christians um, 2,000 years ago? One of the ideas of the Bible scholars are that Shiloh is very much connected to Messiah um, for many reasons, and we'll go into two of them. One is the fact that Samuel, the prophet, uh, grew up in, uh, in Shiloh. That's where he heard God for the first time. And the same Samuel went on to anoint King David. Hmm. And so Jesus that comes from the lineage of King David is immediately directed or connected to Shiloh. And also the uh, blessing of Jacob to the tribe of Judah that the scepter will not move from his hands until Shiloh comes. Mm -hmm. And so Shiloh is a very, very important place the, uh, a place that's connected to the coming of Messiah. The coming of Messiah, very prophetically important. And uh, you, you may have noticed uh, that uh, Aaron calls it Shiloh. Uh, and we in America call it Shiloh. In, but it's the same place, Shiloh <laughs> in Hebrew, right? Yes. A and uh, and I'm, I'm sure you run into that all the time. Dif the way you pronounce place names in Israel, probably it, it grates on your ear when you hear Americans pr mispronounce those names, right? right, right. And again... Uh, the, I think the primary thing that I would like for you to take out of, of this interview with, uh, with uh, Aaron today is the reality of the Bible. It's, just, it's dramatic, it is amazing, and you almost have to see it to believe it. But uh, anything else that you'd like to, to mention at this? We're, we're running out of time, sadly, but uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Um, I think that the future is full of surprises. Hmm. And I think that, that as, as the more archaeologists continue investigating the land of Israel, and especially the biblical heartland of Israel, Judea and Samaria, they will find more and more evidence that will strengthen the, the Bible and the stories of the Bible. And all we have to do is just be tuned to, to the, the, these discoveries and do the much, as much as we can to visit Israel to visit these sites, to stand where, where all these stories happened. And if you can't come to Israel, watch the DVDs because they will change your life. And, and by the way, you're working on a fourth uh, DVD and that will be uh, the DVD that deals with the very place we've been talking about, right? Yes, correct. Uh, you know, uh, before we started this, uh, this program today, uh, I, I was talking with Aaron and he said that from his perspective in Israel, uh, tourism is multiplying exponentially. People, more and more people are coming and a lot of them are coming from the Far East, the Orient, which tells us one thing. It tells us there are a lot of Christians coming from the Orient, which means that there is a, uh, if you will, uh, a rapid growth uh, in Christianity in the Far East. This is good news. It is. There is a revival in the Far East. 
especially in China and Korea and many other countries in that area. And they're coming, they're flocking into Israel. And for me as an Israeli Jew, it just brings so much joy to see the prophecies fulfilled, to see the nations from all over the world coming and, and visiting the land. Well, it, it's been great talking with you. Very exciting. And one of these days, who knows, we might have to come over there and see more sites. I'd love to uh, travel up to uh, this site uh, where uh, I, it's amazing. Joshua built an altar there and you can still travel to that same spot and there it is. Wow. Uh, we'd like to make this book, uh, A Nation Born by Adams or Tall, available to you. And uh, you can't get it anywhere else right now. So uh, if you want to read it, and by the way, Adams or Tall was a groundbreaking uh, archaeologist. He he broke wide open some things that are still in the process of being broken open today. He was a leader. Uh, we have the book and then uh, three of the DVDs that we described to you. We're putting those together uh, as a package in our uh, online bookstore, prophecywatchers.com. Go to the online bookstore and look for the Secret Archaeology package, the three VD DVDs and Adam Zertal's book, yours for a gift of $100. And by the way, what a package. You're going to just revel in the discoveries that are being made in Israel today. And uh, going out today, uh, I'd, I'd just like to, to say that, that Aaron Lipkin is the owner and manager of Lipkin Tours. And you, you spend, I suppose, most of your time taking people to the sites that you're talking about. Yes, and I, I have a great job. Um, I, I have a, a, an experience that, that I think people, a lot of people envy, and that is to, to be connected to the land, uh, not just to, you know, to make a living and to live a normal life, but to daily be connected to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Aaron, Moses, Joshua, King David, King Solomon, every day, every minute, every second. And as you all know, I love drones, and they all have aerial drones of these sites that are beautiful. Your drone shots are just uh, breathtaking. Just You, you get a, a view you can't get any other way. And to look down and, and see something that was in the Bible. And, and now we're finding them Again, that's a confirmation to me as a uh, Bible teacher and, and a teacher of Bible prophecy that we are living at a very, very key and important time in history. And uh, we call ourselves prophecy watchers. We're really Israel watchers. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we are. And you're living right there. How far do you live from Bethel? And your home is not all that far from Bethel, right? Just just a 15-minute drive. 15-minute drive. Aaron Lipkin, it's what a joy it is to hear about the discoveries that are being made in Israel today. Wow. And we'll bring you some more of these discoveries as they become available. I'm Gary Stearman. You keep watching. We are... Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com. In the meantime, keep watching everybody.